program together um, before, and then just God uh, takes over. I thought the, the worship time was so powerful. And singing that um, hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, our uh, wedding hymn many, many years ago, just reminded me of the faithfulness of God. Uh, and to reflect on that just for a moment, that God will be faithful in 2023, and he will be faithful in 2024. Don't, don't get rid of this year um, and expect next year to be super different. But we move forward and we seal off what's happened in this particular year. And I'd encourage you to give that time to the Lord, whether you do it uh, tonight in a prayer time and you say, right, um, Lord, for the last 12 months, I give you this year. This is whatever's happened. Whatever's gone on, I give you this year. The highs, the lows, I give you this year. And now, Lord, on this first minute of 2024, I give you this year. I give you my life. And dedicate what you've done, where you've been. Dedicate that to the Lord, but then prepare and plan ready for the future. So many people just fall into the new year, or <laughs> they fall into the new year drunk, and, uh, and it's like, they stagger into the new year. Then the first day of the new year, then they argue with someone, and they put something on Facebook, and then they spend a whole load of money, and they do a whole load of things. They go, oh, this year's going to be terrible. Well, come on, let's start right. And the right thing to do is to start in the Lord's house, to start right here, right now, to start in God's house, to start to worship and praise him, and give him, the, give him all that he's worthy of. And that's what we're here to do this morning. And I've got a word for you. And God has really placed this on my heart. And it might be hard. It might be difficult. It might be a bit complicated for, for some of us to pick up. But I want us to focus on the second advent. The first advent is behind me when Jesus arrived and came. But the second advent is, is an anticipation of what's about to happen. And there's a quickening in our world that Jesus is coming back. And some people say, well, uh, Jesus hasn't come back yet, John. Well, uh, well, he, he hasn't come back, I know. But we're waiting, aren't we? We're anticipating that Jesus is going to come back. And I know that if Jackie ever goes out or goes away, I know that I want to be ready for her return. But love what time you're coming back. What minute is it going to be? Because I want to make sure the dishes are done. I want to make sure that the carpet is hoovered. But what, what minute is it going to be? And, and God says in heaven, and Jesus says, no one knows the day or the hour for the second advent. No one knows when Jesus will return. But what we need to do, and I want you to reflect on this this morning, is that we need to be ready. And the question for you this morning is, are you ready? Are you ready for the second advent? Are you ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ? That great event when Christians will go to heaven and be with him for all, all eternity. Imagine a world without Christians. Imagine a world when Jesus has come back and all the Christians have gone. Imagine an alpha course. Not to be much fun, is it, without Christians? Paul Brown sends his apologies. He's got the norovirus, so we really didn't want him to be in church. So thank you, Kyle, for sharing all of that about Alpha. It was absolutely brilliant. But I want to encourage you this morning to think and reflect on the second advents. We begin at the beginning of the birth of Jesus. Simeon and Anna. We find them in Luke chapter 2, verses 25 and 38. And I want to be like Simeon and Anna for the second advent. You see, when Jesus was, was prophesied about in the Old Testament, they, they were reading it, they were studying it, they were thinking about it. But Simeon and Anna, they were ready. They were ready for the birth of Jesus. Messiah, Savior, the Christ. They were ready for him. Why was that? Because their hearts were prepared before God. They were alive. They were awake. They were at the temple. And I'm amazed that so many of you have come here on New Year's Eve to church. There must be something about you. There must be something about those people online that, that, that there's a hunger, there's a passion, there's a desire to connect with God. 
You've not just come here to maybe stand in the car park and be wet with our amazing young people. You've not just come here because uh, you thought there, there was some free turkey going. You've come here because there's a, there's a supernatural drawing from God that draws you to this place to be amongst God's people, to worship God together because of all that he is and all that he's done. And for Simeon and Anna, they were at the temple. And they were at the temple, and then on one occasion, on the eighth day of Jesus' birth, Jesus was taken to the temple to be circumcised. Simeon, in Luke 2, verses 25, he was waiting and ready. You know what? Sometimes we're waiting, and we're not sure what we're waiting for. We're great at queuing in the UK, aren't we? Some people join a queue, they don't even know what's at the end of it. Well, is there a queue? Well, yes, I'll I'll join it. (laughs) What are we queuing for? I don't know, I'm just standing behind this person. And I know at Christmas time, you could queue for anything and end up not getting what you wanted. But he was waiting and he was ready. And then in verse 30, Luke chapter 2, verse 30, Simeon holds the baby Jesus. He says, my eyes have seen your salvation. You see, there'll be a point when our eyes will see the Lord. We'll see the, we'll see the culmination of our faith. And whether it's us or uh, people that will follow us, we'll see Jesus return to take to heaven those people that know him and love him. What a great and glorious day that will be. But for Simeon, it happened on earth. He was ready and he was waiting. And his eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. For Anna in verse 36 of Luke chapter 2, Anna was very old. <laughs> I love that in scripture, isn't it? As, as uh, Dr. Luke is writing here, he just refers to Anna as very old. Does anyone ever feel like that? <laughs> You feel like you're in church today and you feel very old. Well, you're not very old. You could be as committed and passionate as Simeon and as Anna. Anna in verse 37, she stayed at the temple. And it's so, so important that we we understand that we're not just at the temple, we're not just at the church, we're not just God's people, just hanging out, being cool, being trendy, sort of connecting up from whenever we want. Anna, she worshipped, she fasted, and she prayed. And I wonder what your New Year resolutions are going to be. Why don't you have a New Year revolution? Why don't we be a church that worships? Oh, but we, we do. We, we sing with Olwyn and Neil. We do very well, and we've got some good voices in the church. Some are louder than others. I want to be a, be a church that really grasps hold of worship. 24-7 worship. Not Hillsong or Bethel or Maverick City but worshippers of Jesus Christ. And Anna stayed at the temple and she worshipped. Anna prayed. Why don't we be a church of prayer? 2024, a revolution to be a church of prayer. A church of worship and a church of prayer. A church of fasting. We seek God in our day, don't we? You know what? It's the church that's going to make a difference to this world in 2024. Did you know that? It's you that's going to make a difference in this world in 2024 because of your faith, because of your love, because of your passion, because of your commitment, because of your dedication, because of your prayer, because of your fasting, because of your worship, it's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference in your family. It's going to make a difference in your home. It's going to make a difference in your community. And it's going to make a difference in your workplace. If we become people of worship, people of prayer, and people that fast. 
So as we conclude this sermon, we focus now on the second advent, the return of Jesus. And it's so rare for me and other preachers to preach on the coming of Jesus. It's mentioned sometimes, but for us to focus in on it, to home in on it. And we need to understand the the whole gospel, the full gospel. And the full gospel is that Jesus was born. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. Jesus ascended into heaven. And in Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, the angels say, as you have seen him go, he will return. As you have seen him go, he will return. Are you ready for the return of Jesus? Our younger people will probably be saying, I don't want Jesus to return yet. I've got my whole life ahead of me. What is this old bloke saying on the stage? And our our seniors will be saying, I'm really hoping that Jesus returns now. I can see see Julie Corfee over there nodding her head and she's 85 years young. And she's going, Lord, in my day and in my time, will you return while I'm still alive? And our young people are going, I don't want this, John. I've got all there. I'm not even married. (laughs) And we live in that dichotomy, don't we? That as we get older, we think more about the return of Jesus. But he will return one day. And maybe it's 2024. Larry Norman sang a great song. And some of you have started to sing it in your own heads and your own minds. I wish we'd all been ready there's no time to change your mind the sun has come and you've been left behind and as a young boy I I, I heard that song I saw the film which was called something and Larry Norman's song was part of that see the films had such an impact on me but the song did And as a young boy, I used to always think, as I didn't walk with the Lord, Jesus, please don't come back and find me doing what I'm doing. And as a 21-year-old then, I gave my life to Christ. I was out running on Thursday, or sort of half running, running, jogging, you know, when you've had that much dinner. It's not that easy to run. And I saw... Two bloomed daffodils. Daffodils, December the 28th. Doesn't that make you think? The seasons are changing. The signs of the times. The seasons are changing. I believe that we're winding up towards a day when Jesus will return. Look at Israel. Look at all that's happening in your world. But it's Jesus that we focus on just for a few more minutes. It's Jesus who will speak to us in these moments. Luke chapter 17, verses 22 to 36. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming will you, when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, there he is, and here he is. Do not go running off after them, for the Son of Man in the, his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first he must suffer and many th- suffer many things and be rejected by his generation." Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People will be eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage. Up to the day of Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom and fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to them. 
Likewise, no one in a field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell, I tell you, on that night, two people will be, will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in a field. One will be taken and the other left. The words of Jesus. The words of Jesus spoken so clearly to us all. Jesus uh, describes himself as the Son of Man in this passage. From verses 22 to 25, Jesus says that he will come back one day, but first he must suffer. You see, all the prophecies about Jesus that we see in the New Testament, one in 30 verses are about the second coming. It's mentioned 329 times in the Bible that Jesus will return. You see, Jesus must come and he must suffer. In verses 26 and 27, see, we need to wake up, church. I need to be as alert and as awake as I can be. And we all need to as God's people. The example of, of Noah, and we love the story of Noah, don't we? We love teaching the children in LiveWires and in other places about the story of Noah. But the reality of the story of Noah was that only Noah and his family were ready. The whole world out there isn't ready for the return of Jesus. And I want you to know that you can be ready. You will be ready and you need to be ready. The example of Lot's Lot looked back and was destroyed. It's so hard, isn't it, on this day? Uh, and some, some of you don't even know what day it is. And I think Kyle described that absolutely perfectly. Is I woke up this morning, I didn't even know it was Sunday. I'm like, Sunday? Oh, oh okay. Um, who's preaching? Oh, I'm preaching. I, have I got a sermon? You know, you know it's, it's, life is like that. What am I doing tonight? Where am I going? What's happening? Have we got the fireworks prepared? Have we got visitors? Have we not? Have we got family coming over? It's our granddaughter's birthday tomorrow. Are they, are they, they're coming over. Jackie, have we got presents? You know, our lives are like that. They're so chaotic. But the example of Noah and Lot is the people around them weren't ready. And Lot looked back and was destroyed. Verse 30 to 36, Jesus speaks so powerfully. The one is taken and the other, other left. Please, 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 don't make up a theology of salvation. I, hear, I, I read so much on social media, and I'm sure you read it as well, they're up, up, up there in heaven looking down at us this Christmas. This year, so-and-so's gone to be with so-and-so person. And I look at it every time and I go, did they know Jesus? Have they accepted him as their Lord and Savior and very best friend? Have they asked him to take away all of their sin? I can't answer. But I know in a twinkling of an eye, the Lord will return. And he'll return in great power, great authority, great might. And all those that know him and love him will be taken to be with him for all eternity. I like to challenge even people within our own church. You might think you're a Christian. You might even be a church member. But I ask you this question. If Jesus returned today, would there be a church service here next Sunday? 
If Jesus returned today, would there be a church service here next Sunday? I'd like to say no. I'd like to say that we would all be taken. We would all go to be with the the Lord for all eternity. But I'm going to ask you this morning, don't take that chance. Don't take that chance at the end of this year. Make sure that you're ready and that you're prepared. And as we began with Simeon and Anna, we'll close with them. They prayed. They fasted, they worshipped, and they were ready. My resolve before you this morning is that as we begin 2024, that I would be an active watchman. I would be an active watchwoman if you're a woman, and that you'll be watching for the signs of the times, for the birth pains that are that are happening in our world. It may be a little example, daffodils blooming, but look into it much deeper. We're in the end times, and the return of Jesus is much closer than it ever has been. In a moment, we'll pray. I'd like to pray for a man called Chris Marriott. Many of you have heard of this dear man on the, on the news. Christian man, a volunteer with CMA that Jeff and Julie run at a, a Tafili charity, CMA, volunteer with Food Bank, a Christian man, went to help a lady that was in distress, who was killed in an instance. He, he, he was ready to be with the Lord. He wasn't planning to be with the Lord but he was ready. And I want to ask you this morning, are you ready? No more games, church. No more games. Don't play about with the Lord. Don't play about with your faith or your salvation. Don't take any risks with sin. Sin is crouching around at the door. Many of you come into church. Sometimes you walk a dark path. Don't take any risks with sin or your salvation. As we bow our heads to pray, there's going to be um, some silence. Give you an opportunity to reflect on this last 12 months. Give it to the Lord. And for any of you that are here this morning, that if Jesus came back right here, right now, you're not sure if you're going to be chosen and taken. It's in these moments that we get ourselves ready. Ask him to take away all of your sin. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you again. Commit to follow him for the rest of your life. Worship him, seek his face, and follow his path and purpose for your life. So as you just spend a a few moments quiet,
Father God, in this moment, in this holy moment, we sit or stand before you today. For this last 12 months, we give them to you. All that's been done, all that's been, all that's been said, the highs and the lows, the successes and the challenges. We give it all to you. Father God, I pray for anybody this morning that on this last day of the year, they want to give their life to you. I pray that in this moment, they will ask you to take away all of their sin. They will ask you to fill them with your Holy Spirit. And they will commit their life to following you, Jesus. Whatever that looks like, whatever that means, wherever that takes them. I pray for anyone that's wavered off the path they once believed and they once knew and maybe even has been baptized here. Lord, I pray that we will all come back to you. Forgive us for those wayward times. Forgive us for those repetitive and habitual sins that we fall into. Forgive us for those times of lethargy and apathy. Forgive us for those times when Facebook is more appealing than the Word of God. Encourage us in your Word. May we go deeper in prayer. May we go to places in prayer that we've never been to before. May we see visions and dreams that are outside of our natural and that you will take us into those supernatural places. We pray, Father God, for anybody that's unwell, that's going through treatment or has any illness or sickness of any sort. We pray, Father God, that you will heal people this morning. That as they open up their hearts and reach out to you, we pray that your healing hand will reach down from heaven and that you would touch and heal people in this place. And Father God, we pray for the family of Chris Marriott. Lord, we bring his wife and two children before you, and the wider family involved in uh, the trauma and, and loss of such a precious man. We thank you for his witness and his life, that's been on national television, that I'm sure that, that ha had he not died, he would never have been on national television. But Lord, we pray, we pray that you will help his dear wife and family. Lord, we pray for the, 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 the issues and the, the problems that all of this creates. We pray for the lady that was, uh, that was injured on the floor that he went to help. And Father God, for all the pain and difficulty that we see in, just in our nation, we pray that you will heal this land. We pray that you will revive your churches like never before. That we will see churches grow that were, that were condemned to close. And that we will see life in Christians. We will see a passion and a drive and a desire in Christians that we've not seen for many, many years. And Father God, we pray for this world. We pray for Israel and Ukraine. We pray for Gaza. We pray for Russia. We pray for the African nations. We pray for Europe. Father God, we pray. We pray that you will bring about conclusions, 
You will bring about endings to wars that have raged for, for, for many, many years now. Lord, I pray that as Christians, we won't be uh, opinionated or social commentators, but we'll be men and women of God of prayer. And that we will commit to pray for these nations and for the brokenness that we see in our world every single day. Father God, and we promise in all things that we'll give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.